Good morning. Uh, pleased to be joined here by a number of my colleagues, uh, Parliament Secretary Chang, of course, MP Zaid, uh, MP Kayabaga, uh, Elizabeth May, MP May, uh, MP El Khoury, MP Ali, uh, and, uh, and my colleague in the House of Commons, MP Jenny Kwan, who you'll be hearing from in a few seconds. Also, really pleased to welcome Catherine Burton and Carol Sutherland Brown and advocates and parents uh, directly affected by our announcement today. Uh, as well as Don Chapman uh, from the Lost Canadians, who some of you know quite well. And we have citizenship by descent, individuals who are born outside of our country to Canadian parents. As Canadians, we're a diverse group, uh, but we all share a common set of values, take pride in who we are and what our country stands for. We're a country that supports human rights, equality, and respect for all people. There's no doubt that Canadian citizenship is highly valued and recognized around the world. We're we want a citizenship to be fair, accessible, with clear and transparent rules. Not everyone uh, is entitled to it, but for those who are, it needs to be fair. That's why when issues arise around citizenship law, it's important that Parliament addresses them. The proposed legislation will extend citizenship by descent beyond the first generation in a way that is inclusive and upholds the value of our citizenship. If passed, the bill extends automatic citizenship to anyone who was born outside the country to a Canadian parent before the legislation comes into force. We also introduced amendments to respond to issues raised at parliamentary committees as well as in the courts. They will restore citizenship to those we call lost Canadians. That could be someone who was never able to become a citizen or lost citizenship because of previous and outdated legislative provisions. While the government previously brought forward changes that fixed the status of most lost Canadians, a small impact did cohort remained. Under the new legislation, children born abroad to a Canadian citizen who is also born outside Canada will be a Canadian citizenship from birth if their parent can demonstrate they have a substantial connection to Canada. As long as a Canadian parent who is born outside of Canada has accumulated three years of time spent in Canada before the birth of the child, they'll be able to pass down their citizenship to their child. Finally, we wanted to take this opportunity to continue to minimize differential outcomes as much as possible for children born abroad and adopted by Canadians compared to children born to Canadians. The amendments build on the good work the House of Commons and Senate have done on Bill S245, while improving on the proposals in the Senate Public Bill and comprehensively addressing the issues raised by the courts. Finally, there's been a lot of talk about uh, conservatives like Pierre Polyev wanting to take away people's rights. They say there's nothing to fear. Canadians should just trust them. This is an example of conservatives having taken away Canadians' right and something they hold most dear to them in their citizenship. So when they, conservatives say nothing to fear, Canadians need to take note of what they've actually done in the past. This law fixes. This is not Mark fixes it. This is not Mark Miller talking. This is the courts that have said so clearly. Thank you. Je remercie. A little more on that. Uh, now over to my colleague MP Jenny Kwan. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Um, let me first um, say thank you, and most particularly, I want to acknowledge the advocates and the family members who's been impacted by this unconstitutional and unjust law that created a second-class citizen, what we now call as lost Canadians. People will remember 15 years ago, it was the Conservatives that brought in this law. It was the Conservatives that stripped children of Canadian parents the right to pass on their citizenship automatically to their children. As a result of that, in effect, they, the Conservatives, have created a second-class citizen, citizens in Canada. And how is this important? And why is it important? I have become a member of Parliament since 2015. I've talked endlessly to advocates like Don Chapman, to family members like Carol Sutherland, along with family members who's here, Catherine Burton, and so many others, how their lives are being impacted as a result of this unjust law. Families, Canada is a global community of Canadians. People travel, people study abroad, people work abroad, people fall in love abroad, people have families abroad. But guess what? As a result of this law, 
It meant that for some of those families, they have had to be separated from their children. Some children have been rendered stateless. The law's implications are significant. And Canadian families had had it and had to take the government to court. And the court had ruled that that law was unconstitutional. It was punitive, frankly, unnecessarily. And that's why we're here today. The Conservatives had an opportunity to fix this last year. We had a Senate private member's bill before us at committee, albeit the Senate bill was narrow in scope. But we worked endlessly across partisan lines with different members, with government members, many of them are standing here at the committee, with the Greens, with the Bloc, and I even talked to the Conservatives. And they swore up and down and said that they want to fix this. But what did they do at committee? They filibuster right. the opportunity to fix this for more than 30 hours. And even after the fact, that bill is ready to go, actually, to be called for third reading in the House of Commons. They delayed and delayed and delayed and is nowhere to be found. So when it became clear that that was not going to happen, what was imperative that needed to be done for the families to do justice for the families was for the government to introduce the bill. I've spoken with, over the years, successive ministers, from Minister McCallum to Minister Hassan to Minister Fraser and to now Minister Miller. And we finally have this bill before us today. So I do want to acknowledge and say thank you to Minister Miller for doing this important work. It's hard work, it's complicated, but it needed to be done. The bill has just been introduced in the House of Commons, and I am optimistic that it has addressed the issues that I have brought to the attention through the amendments in S245, in addition to addressing concerns for adoptee international adoptee families and adjusting the timeline so that this in effect can become law and so that we don't have lost Canadians anymore. So that we don't have second class citizens anymore. That we're equals as Canadians. This is what this bill is about. So it's a historic moment. It is an important moment. It is how the House of Commons should work for us to work across party lines for the community. And if the Conservatives say they support the community, if Mr. Poiliev says they support the community, then I would ask them to not obstruct progress of this bill, pass this bill so that it can become law and right the historic wrong that they brought on Canadian families 15 years ago. Thank you.